How's it going, people? Now, this is the logger. I'm going to try one of... Th this is the Pilsner. One's got a little green in the label. The other's got a red. I'm going to start with the Pilsner. Since I did the lager in the last one. they're very close in taste. A little different. I can't put my finger on it. I suppose the Pilsner is a little bit lighter, maybe? A little sweeter, maybe? I'm going to have me uh, a lager after I finish this Pilsner. Chapter 13 of Alma. Let's start with the masthead here. Alma's discourse continued. Ah, oh, good. The holy order of the Son of God. High priests. Why ordained Melchizedek? Mel, yeah, Melchizedek and Abraham. Okay, we're we're finally getting to the King of Salem here. I know uh, the Apostle Paul was pretty hung up on this guy too. God, Abraham actually gave him money and kissed his ass. He must have been something. And he was the king of Salem, which became Jerusalem after we conquered it. So, yeah. The priest king of Salem. Mm. That's a little sweeter than the other. More like apple. Almost like the hard cider. One. And again, my brethren, I would cite your minds forward to the time when the Lord God gave these commandments unto his children. And I would that ye should remember that the Lord God ordained priests after his holy order, which was after the order of his son, capitalized S, son, uh, to teach these things unto the people too. And those priests were ordained after the order of the Son in a manner that thereby the people might know in what manner to look forward to his Son for redemption. Three. And this is the manner after which they were ordained, being called and prepared from the foundation of the world. Uh, according to the foreknowledge of God. He made the world with this as part of the plan before. Pre -no foreknowledge on account of their exceeding faith and good works. That's why he set up the priesthood before he went from the foundation of the world itself. Did that make Adam a priest? I guess so. All right. Yeah, their faith and good works in the first place, being left to choose good or evil, Therefore, having chosen good and exercising exceeding great faith, are called with a holy calling. Yea, with that holy calling, which was prepared with, and according to, a preparatory redemption for such. A preparatory redemption? For 
And thus, they have been called to this holy calling on account of their faith, while others would reject the Spirit of God on account of the hardness of their hearts and the hardness of their minds. Oh, and the blindness of their minds. That's right. It's back to that. Hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds. While, if it had not been for this, they might have had a great privilege as their brethren. Five. Or in fine, in the first place, they were on the same standing with their brethren, thus this holy calling being prepared from the foundation of the world. Yes, they're repeating themselves. I'm on verse 5. Boy, I'm glad I'm calling off the verse numbers now. Uh, from the foundation of the world, for such as would not harden their hearts, being in and through the atonement of the Holy Begotten Son, who was prepared. Hasn't arrived yet, because we're still in B.C. 82, according to the footnote on every single page. And thus, being called by this holy calling, and ordained unto the high priesthood of the holy order of God, to teach his commandments unto the children of men, that they might also enter unto his rest. 7. This high priesthood being after the order of his son, which order was from the foundation of the world? In other words, being without beginning of days or end of years, being prepared from, from eternity to all eternity. How do you connect eternities when there's no beginning and end? As a matter of fact, unless it's still going on, <laughs> it's eternity! With no beginning and end, so eternity to eternity. Uh, according to the foreknowledge, his foreknowledge of all things. Eight. Now, they were ordained after this manner, being called with a holy calling, and ordained with a holy ordinance, and taking upon them the high priesthood of the holy order, which calling and ordinance and high priesthood is without beginning or end. So there's one eternity. There's <laughs> only one. And it has to be still going on. I guess. I don't know about all this eternity shit. <laughs> Nine. Thus, they became high priests forever. Ah, that's why we're going on about this. So they're, even after they're dead, they're still alive. And they're still in power. And we still got to kiss their bony asses, I guess. And the order of the Son, the only begotten of the Father, who is without beginning of days or end of years, who is full of grace, equity, and truth. And thus it is. Amen. Ten. Now, this, now, as I said concerning the holy order of the high priest, uh, hood, uh, <laughs> there were many who were ordained and became high priests of God. And it was on account of their exceeding faith and repentance and their righteousness before God. Their choosing to repent and work righteousness 
rather than to perish. Uh, nice. Yeah, there's a choice. Not much of one. Eleven. Therefore, they were called after this holy order and were sanctified, and their garments were washed white through the blood of the Lamb, who hasn't been born yet. Twelve. Now, I need a drink. Now, they, after being sanctified by the Holy Ghost, ooh, having their garments made white and being pure and spotless before God, could not look upon sin, save it were with abhorrence, because they're, they're saints. And there were many, exceeding great many. That's why they call them many. Who, who were made pure and entered into the rest of the Lord their God. Thirteen, thirteen. And now, my brethren, I would that ye should humble yourselves before God and bring forth fruits meat for repentance that ye may also enter into the rest that rest yea humble yourselves even as the people in the days of Melchizedek the guy that the apostle Paul was in love with too who just briefly gets mentioned before Sodom and Gomorrah gets trashed and Lot knows his daughters. And they were good. Who was also a high priest after the same order which I have spoken? Who also took upon them the high priesthood forever? You know, it's kind of like I went to this Hindu uh, church, uh, which is right down the road, actually. Uh, self-realization center uh, founded by Paramahansa Yogananda and yeah one of the patron saints of Hinduism is Jesus Christ right out of their book yeah apparently he was a yogi also hey why not 15 and it was the same Melchizedek to whom Abraham paid tithes now we're getting into tithing, folks, which they've just been tentatively hinting at. Surrender your substance, or share it. Abraham paid this guy tithes. Yay. Even our father Abraham paid tithes of one-tenth part of all he possessed. Sixteen. Now, these ordinances were given after this manner, that thereby the people might look forward on the Son of God. It being a type of his order, or it being his order, uh, and this, that they might look forward to him for a remission of their sins. They, they're on back order. For that lamb blood. Praise him. We need his blood. And we're running low on crackers. That they might enter into the rest of God. But they can't do it if there's if they got spots. 17. Now this Melchizedek was a king over the land of Salem. And his people had waxed strong in iniquity and abomination. Hang on, I gotta take a break.
my buddy, B-Boy3. Check him out. He doesn't have a lot of videos, but he's going to. As soon as people start watching, he'll, he'll dazzle you. Abominations! Yay! They had all gone astray. They... <laughs> Uh, we're full of all manner of wickedness, as explained above. Twice. Eighteen. But Melchizedek, having exercised mighty faith and received the high, the office of the high priesthood according to the holy order of God, did preach repentance unto his people, and behold, they did repent. And Melchizedek did establish peace in the land in his days. Therefore, he was called the Prince of Peace, but not capitalized. That's the other guy. He gets capitalized. Uh, the Prince of Peace. For he was the King of Salem, and he did reign under his father. Hi, Daddy. Uh, Nineteen. Now, there were many before him, and also there were many afterwards, but none were greater. Therefore, of him they have more particularly made, they have more particularly made mention. You know, this comes right out of Paul. I wonder if they got in the footnotes here. Don't see any epistles mentioned. Uh -uh. No nope, bunch of Mormon shit. Books, I mean, excuse me. Nope. Just Genesis. Yeah, I forgot where Paul mentions them. I think it's Hebrews. Uh. And behold, they did repent. And Melchizedek did establish peace in the land in his days. Therefore, he was called the Prince of Peace. <sighs> For he was a king of Salem. He did reign under his father. 19. Now, there were many before him, and also there were many afterwards, but none were greater. That's why the Bible barely mentions them. Must be some lost books. I haven't read those yet. I've read some of the, a lot of the Apocrypha, the Pseudo-Apocrypha, whatever else. I've read a lot of shit, but I don't remember that. I, wait, I think I've seen Mel Melchizedek, maybe in the Talmud. I can't be sure. Uh, 20. Now, I need not rehearse the matter. What I have said must may suffice. May suffice. Behold, the scriptures are before you. If ye will rest, wrist, you know, like wrestling, rest, rest them with a W. Uh, rest them it shall be to your own destruction. So don't rest them. I think it's like forcing to taken away by force. Something like that. Uh, 21. And now. Uh, now that's the Pilsner. I'm going to pour a lager. I think there is a little difference. I can't quite make it out. It's real subtle. Or I'm a, just a little thick, which is very possible.
Let's see. This is a lager. It tastes very close. Maybe a shade darker, maybe. They're very close, but this has got more of a body to it, I think. I like them both. I couldn't pick. Oh, that wasn't even worth it. All right. It came to pass that when Alma had said these words unto them, see, because he's still bitching this crowd out for the past three chapters, I believe. But they're not permitted to touch him. <clears throat> so he's going to speak his mind and say his piece. I wonder what happens when he runs out of things to say. I guess stay tuned to chapter 14, which is much better than this one. And stupid shit. I tell you, you this one. I might follow it up with this. All right. Uh, yeah. And now it came to pass that when Alma had said these words unto them, he stretched forth his hands, his hand unto them, and cried with a mighty voice, saying, "Now, this is the time to repent. Now, now is the time to repent." For the day of salvation draweth nigh. <laughs> 22. Yea, and the voice of the Lord by the mouth of the angels doth declare it unto all nations. Yea, doth declare it. He said it again. Uh that they may have glad tidings of great joy. Yay! Yay! And he doth sound these glad tidings among all his people. Yay! Even to them that are scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. Wherefore, they have come unto us. 23. And they are made known unto us in, in plain terms that we may understand that we can not err. And this because of our being wanderers in a strange land. Yeah, wasn't Moses bitching about that? And Jesus like, Even a fox has a hole to ground, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his sweet head. Pity party. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, therefore, we are thus highly favored, for we have these glad tidings declared unto us in all parts of our vineyard, which goes back to what? Jacob 5, I believe, where I had to break it up. It was such a thirsty fucking chapter. And pointless. 24. For behold, angels are declaring it unto many that at this time in our land, and this is for the purpose of preparing the hearts of children of men to receive his word at the time of his coming in his glory. 25. And now we only wait to hear the joyful news declared unto us by the mouth of angels of his coming. For the time cometh. We know not how soon. Would to God that it might be in my day, but let it be sooner or later, in it I will rejoice. 26. Just because. A little different. I get it now. Okay. Pilsner sound. I kind of like that, I think. The other's good, though. They're both good. 26. 
And it shall be known unto the just and holy man by the mouth of angels at the time of his coming, that the words of our fathers may be fulfilled according to that which they have spoken concerning him, which was according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. 27. And now, my brethren, I wish from the inmost part of my heart, yea, with great anxiety even unto pain, that ye would hearken unto my words and cast off your sins and not procrastinate the day of your repentance. We need your tithes. So the sooner you repent, the better for us. 28. <clears throat> but that ye would humble yourselves before the Lord and call on his holy name and watch and pray continually that ye may not be tempted above that which ye can bear and thus be led by the Holy Spirit, becoming humble, meek, submissive, patient, full of love. We love Big Brother. And long-suffering. Hardly. Not me. <laughs> I don't like suffering for long. 29. Having faith on the Lord, having a hope that ye shall receive eternal life, having the love of God always in your hearts, that ye may be lifted up at the last day, which is what, you know, less than a dozen days away, since I don't know when I'm uploading this video. <laughs> I'm going to stop naming dates. <laughs> Uh, lifted up at the last day and entered unto his rest. 30. And may the Lord grant unto you repentance. That How can he grant you repentance? Isn't that you feel sorry? Are you asking, saying, may God make you feel sorry? That doesn't sound good. <coughs> Damn. All right, all right. Uh, that ye may not bring down his wrath upon you, and yet you're asking him to grant you repentance. Why don't you mean, you really mean you're going to grant him with your repentance? That magical sky daddy who doesn't exist. That ye may not bring down his wrath upon you, that ye may not be bound down by the chains of hell, that ye may not suffer the second death. You don't want to go there. One's enough. 31. And Alma spake many more words unto the people which are not written in this book. And that's it for 13. I'll see you guys chapter 14 where you will see the incredible power of God's how he comes to the rescue and saves people and not really yeah definitely show up for 14 I can't wait to do it I just might do it after I finish this one peace the fuck out wonderful Whatever the fuck it is you're having. I want it to be wonderful. Damn it! Just try.